Bobo with distresspro.com and I want to show you how to get custom downloads of the different types of data so you can get lists of banks in specific areas with specific types of assets that you're looking for and uh, this is going to make your search hopefully a whole lot easier it's going to allow you to to download a spreadsheet with uh, with the info that you're looking for so we're at the FDIC homepage and what I want you to do is there's there's no good way to do this uh, it's kind of a mess so what I'm gonna ask you to do is sc scroll down here underneath quick links it says analysts and we're, I'm gonna click on that and now what I'm looking at is are the statistics on depository institutions we're gonna click on that and then we're not actually going to use that section, but this is the first time now that this menu up top appears appears here, data download, and I'm going to come down to custom financial data. SDI, and I click on that. And there's going to be a link to this right below this video. Now we see custom download report selections. And from here, what I can do is I can start to select some of the things that that I want to know. So uh, other real estate owned or OREO or OREO commonly referred to in the industry as REO. I, I want that. And then uh, maybe some of the other things that I want to know here are perhaps I want to know their total assets because I want to get an idea of the size of the bank. Then what I'll do is I'll click here and if you scroll down we can get more detail. Here's other real estate owned. I'm going to click that now I can get more detail here. If I'm looking for commercial real estate and multifamily, I'll click that. Then what I'm going to do is I want to know about the past due and non-accrual assets. So I can click right here. And this gives me a list of all the different codes for the past due and non-accrual assets. So these are the things, these are loans where they're 30 days late, 90 plus days late or in non accrual status and so these are the the late and non-performing loans so one thing I might want to do is here's loans held for sale past due 30 to 89 days I'm interested in that what I can do here depending on the browser that you're using instead of having to read all this I could just look for uh, held for sale now I can see loans held for sale here and is there one more loans held for sale non accrual loans held for sale there uh, let's see if we can get some other information here let's get the uh, commercial and industrial loans uh, right there that's CNI debt we could do the uh, non residential non farm non residential properties this is what is considered to be commercial so uh, and here's by owner occupied non farm non residential 30 to 89 days late so this is how it works so instead of calling it um, commercial they, they call it non farm non residential and these are 30 to 89 days late and we can see these are 90 plus days late or if you're just looking for residential you can do that and we say here are loans secured by one to four family residential properties that are past due 30 to 89 days. And so we can just pick and choose whatever we need. You don't want to load too much in here because it's going to make it really, really hard to, uh, to look at. And so what I'm going to do is scroll down to the non-accrual section and I'm going to add uh, secured by one to four family residential properties in non-accrual status. So this is late stage residential non-performing loan. Right, so now I've got sort of a few selections here. I'm going to go next. Now it's got a summary of all of the choices that I made: the total assets, the total uh, REO or OREO, as it's uh, referred to in the business. And uh, here's I've got it broken down into OREO multifamily and OREO uh, commercial real estate. And then just to show you a little bit about past due and non accrual assets, I've got your loans held for sale 30 to 89 and 90 plus and non accrual and then I also have the uh, secured by one to four family 
residential properties in non-accrual status. And you can see these codes over here, kind of get familiar with those so you know what you're looking at. So what I could do is I could save this. In fact, why don't I go ahead and do that? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a, uh, a name for this. So this is going to be, uh, I'll just call it my REO and NPL report. And then I'm going to enter my email. I'm going to save it. I'm going to wait a really long time. This is a government run website. Probably have time to go get lunch. And there we go, it's saved. Now I'm going to click next. And now I can select where I want this for. So I can go anywhere in the US or I could say, you know, let's suppose I was just targeting the South uh, East, right? So maybe I'm only targeting, uh, let's see, who's down there? We've got uh, Florida and Georgia and you can click and drag on those if you want to and then um, what I can do here also is I can hold uh, control or command depending on what you use. Uh, don't want Alaska, we'll do Alabama and maybe we'll do uh, Arkansas and we'll scroll down and we'll do South Carolina. Okay, and now what I can do is click find. And this is what it's going to give me is my special report. There's 648 institutions. Um, here's the approximate file size. And um, now I can download this. Okay. And I would save that. And then I would open it with uh, whatever you have. I have Excel. You can use Google Docs if you want to do that. Go back here, I'll do change criteria. I can see I'm looking at information as of December 31st. And uh, what I want to point out to you is that this is the most recent data that is available right now on the site. Now, I'm recording this on a May 19th, and the most recent data at the FDIC site is available for December 31st. Uh, so, uh, if you go to Bank Prospector right now, you'll find that we have had the data for the next quarter, for the first quarter, which is the end of March for, uh, um, yeah, for the, for the first quarter. We've had that now for almost a month. And so that is how much quicker we have the information than you're able to get it at the FDIC. And so if you're not currently a Bank Prospector subscriber and you want to get the edge, I, I highly suggest that you do that. So here's what we would do with this. I'm going to show this uh, file in my Finder and then I'm going to open this with Excel. And here we go. Here are all the banks. There's the bank. Here's the uh, headquarters location and the state where it is. This is the certificate number, so you can look it up that way if you want to. All these numbers are in thousands. So here are um, the total assets, the REO, the multifamily REO, the commercial REO, and this is uh, these are loans held for sale past 30, past 90, um, and non-accrual. And then this is the uh, non-accrual, non-residential, so the commercial, uh, the commercial non-performing loans. So that is how that works and I hope you can see how quickly you can sort of get yourself a pretty good list of which banks you should be targeting. Now what you would do from here is you could sort by, well, let's say you're only looking for the smaller banks, so you'd want to strip out anything that's over one billion dollars and then 
if you're only after REO, then you would want to take out any of the banks that do not have any REO. Obviously, they're not worth calling, and you would uh, go through it just like that. If you are not at all familiar with Excel or Google Docs, I suggest you get familiar. It, uh, they are tools that in any kind of financial business when you're dealing with money and notes and REO and that kind of thing, you, you can't you can't live without having some spreadsheet acumen. So I hope this has been helpful for you and uh, we'll see you in the next step.